Hello, crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to the October edition of our Card on Blue Card Club. In today's video, you will be making two cards. And then the rest of the club, which will also be during the third week, because it's the third week of October, we're going to probably have two separate videos. And when I show you them, they involve much more coloring, and you'll see why. So today, we are featuring... Fun and festive, and these are the two cards we're going to make. So let's show you which designer series paper you're going to be using and the stamp set itself. My Card on Blue Card Club members, of which you can be a part of for the month of November, where we'll be featuring So Sincere. So if you sign up now, even though the graphic still has this picture on it, I haven't changed the graphic, but if you sign up now, you'll be getting the So Sincere kit, not the stamp set, because you get that you get that yourself on the website. But this is what you voted for for the month of November. So sincere. And I have a so sincere card to show you using a new product. And when you really want to see something cute, oh my goodness, guys, it's something I made with this and the so sincere. And I'll show you that later because we don't want to digress from our topic. Now, this is the one that you voted on for this month. It's a great one for the scan and cut too, but we're going to make sure we don't need that because in our card club, we don't need any extra equipment. I sent you all of the card bases and you make eight cards each month. Then we feature two different types of designer series paper each month. And they haven't repeated themselves yet, which is amazing because we have so much variety at Stampin' Up. And this is the one we're using. It's called the Joy of Christmas. Your paper package comes with 12 sheets and they're six by six. And this is the one we'll be using for the next set of cards. So you have more than enough to make two cards for th of this style and two cards for this style. So in your packet, you were sent two of these stylish shapes dies. So let's just go ahead and start with the beaver as you voted for. Because the other day I said, what should we start with? And you voted for the beaver and the giraffe. So we're going to go ahead and start with the beaver and the giraffe. We'll go ahead and do a couple of these at the same time. And I'm going to also use this little blending brush because... You were all sent a gift with your card on Blue Card Club of a little blending brush. So let's just go ahead and put some old olive on the edge of those sentiments before we do those, shall we? And then since this one takes longer, we'll, we'll color the draft. Then I'll show you some cards that we're going to be making with the other paper called Merry, Bold, and Bright. So as you can see, I put a little bit of ink onto a stamping block. And then you can tap onto your mat so you don't get a big blob. And then you just sort of ink around the edges of whatever you're doing. So this this way you gives you a little bit of edging. And you could do that for any light color. I just chose Old Olive because it was one of the lighter colors that coordinate with the joy. Was I calling it joy to the world? I meant to say joy of Christmas. And this is the other paper we're using. Let's see. It's called Merry, Bold, and Bright. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. I know I don't sing very well, but it makes me feel good. All right, so you see how Old Olive is a coordinating color? That's why I'm choosing it. So did I do the blob yet? Did I do the blob? All right, so that's how it works. And I'm just going to do it to one of those just so you get the idea. Just wanted to be able to show you ways to use your blending brush. So we're going to actually be stamping in Memento Black today because we're going to be doing a lot of coloring. I have all the... Different blends, the alcohol markers that we'll be using are all here. And probably then some. We'll probably use a couple, a couple markers as well. I love this stamp set. As you can see, I've been making a lot with it. I used every stamp so far. And we've featured it in two of our videos so far. So let's take out Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas Wishes and take out the little beaver and speaking of beaver you're going to see another beaver card later that has nothing to do with this stamp set okay we're going to go ahead and mount the beaver on there and we'll mount we'll mount merry happy christmas wishes on here and then we're going to also do the bird so let's say hmm we're going to do this we're going to do this at an angle across i'm going to do the black part first because I'm gonna just I'm just gonna do it first. I just I just feel like I should do that one first. Where's my memento? 
Memento Black, which I just had out. Okay, let's put this catalog away. Oh, here it is. <laughs> You're probably like, it's right there. I just did a reel. If you don't know what a reel is, it's, it's like a small, miniature video for Instagram and Facebook has it too. And they're allowed to be, it depends on if you use music from, from them or if you, well, actually it doesn't depend. It can be 90 seconds long. YouTube, it depends on whether you use outside music. When you do on YouTube, I can only make them like 15 seconds long, which is too much of a challenge for me. I don't do, I don't do shorts on YouTube as much. I like the long form. But anyway, I just did a reel, so that's why all this stuff is out. I cleaned up and now I'm ready for a new project. I was doing a reel with the Berry Cute series, or the Berry Cute bundle, I should say, because that's what we also do on this channel. We work, we have a workshop. All right, so that's the Happy Christmas Wishes. I'm going to go ahead and take that one off and put it over there for now because I'm going to need the stamping block probably again later. And now we're going to do the beaver. And what I'm doing is you're just going to stamp. Whenever you stamp, whenever you get something out of its case, always stamp on a sticky note or the mat before you do it onto your nice paper. Now this one I want to stand up a little more. So even though the Happy Christmas Wishes is at an angle, this one's sort of not at an angle, so it's like that. Hold it for a few seconds to let the ink soak in. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's so cute. And you have two of each shape, so you can make two of each card. These are from the Stylish Shapes dies, in case I haven't said that already. All right, now we need the little birdie. And take this guy off. And the birdie is in the stamp set. So cute. It's right here. We're going to put a couple birds on the bottom there. We'll just mount it on this giant block for now. Let's go ahead and stick the bird on the block. Bring back the ink. Tap, tap, tap. And we'll put a couple birds on our projects. Okay, so that's what we need to do. And that is the first project stamped. Let's find the lid. Where's my lid? Here's my lid. And then once you have something the way you like it, you pretty much just use it as a guide again. Just look at your own card as a guide, and I'm going to go with the crumb cake. Because crumb cake's a nice neutral color, so we'll start with the dark crumb cake. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to probably leave this one, but I just wanted to show you the blending. I'm going to go ahead and do this one, because this one is... The one that's exactly like my sample. But I was just showing you, go ahead and use your blending brush. And we have the dark crumb cake. Da, da, da. I'm going to go around his head a little bit. Leave his nose open because you could put a little pink nose. That's where the little tiny marker comes in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do is little webbed feet there because that is easier to do while I'm here. All right, that's good. Good enough. And maybe kind of like a little bit of... Oh, uh, go around the body there. So that's the dark crumb cake. And I'm going to take the light crumb cake. And I'm just, I'm just doing a pink nose while I'm thinking of it. Pink nose... Pink nose. That was just petal pink, by the way. Okay, this, this marker is really dried out. So I have it on my wish list to get some... Yeah. It's on my wish list to get some more crumb cake. I use these a lot. And I think my shaded spruce is kind of dried out too. There's certain colors I use a lot of. That's pool party I use the most. 
followed by crumb cake, real red, shaded spoon. I use the Christmas colors a lot. And I have to do 20 swaps, or not 20, 12 swaps. And mail them off by the 20th, so I will be doing a lot of coloring with some Christmas colors. Okay, so that is, oops, I forgot his arm. Forgot the whole arm. Okay, that is the crumb cake part. Now we're going to do, because, so you want to you keep in mind what your paper, the colors with your paper. So it might, it might not look like it, but it's actually cherry cobbler. So you want to take your cherry cobbler. I'm just going to go ahead and use cherry cobbler light. And that's what you want to do everything with that would be your reddish, reddish colors. And don't go too fast with the tip of the mark, even though there's a thin side and a thick side. Don't go too fast because this thing is, this tip is not very exact. The, the tips are pretty good, but not, not as good as the marker. The marker has smaller tips. So we'll do the candy cane and cherry cobbler. And we'll do the little hats and the scarves. All right, good. so far so good. It's coming to life, as you can see. And now you want to take the pool party. We'll do the eye in pool party. And we have we have dark and light pool party. So let's let's color the birds. We can do the opposite though, kind of cool. We'll, we'll do the dark on the bottom here. And we'll do the dark on the head and wing there. So like the opposite. So you're going to take the light pool party and just do the opposite. Just to make, just to change it up. Trying not to get the pool party mixed with the red. And now there's a little tiny beak. So that's why I pulled out my crushed carry marker because this it's just too hard to do the beak with the stamp and blend. The tip is too big. But you still want to color that beak a little bit yellow. And you can even do, you can trace over the feet if you wanted to. So that is good. Now we just did a little, little added touch. It's already cute, but let's add, let's add some wink Stella, shall we? Got to sparkle this guy up. Again, trying not to smear that red. We'll do the balloons. Ooh, fun stuff. And there's a little sparkle on there. So that is that. Now let's take our trimmer and get our paper the way we need it. So here are your pieces. You already have the card bases made, so I don't need to teach you how to do those again. We'll, we'll, write, we'll write it down the measurements for you, but I don't need to teach you how to do them again because you already have them in your packet. So let's take out the Joy of Christmas paper and, and this gold paper. So let's find the pieces we need. Mm, that will be okay. Let's see. I think it was the smaller one. It's this one. She went this piece. All right. And we have for the back. It looks like this piece here is what I use for the back. I keep all my stuff from both from the whole card club in this container. So the thing. Nope, that wasn't the right one. I think this is for the other card, though. Let me see if that was for the other card. Nope, it was the it was the green. It was the shaded spruce. Oh yeah, and we did use that one. All right, so these two, you want to pull out for the next card. You're using these for the next card. So let's now. That was my little frame of reference. All righty, we need. I thought it was that kind of piece, but it's more of like a solid. Here it is. It's this piece here. Isn't that cool looking? That's the one I chose to use. It's the back of that piece. Or you, I mean, you could go ahead and use this piece. But this one's going to give you a better background. All right, so while we're here, we can maybe cut a couple of these at once. We, we should be able to cut because some of the measurements overlap. Like the outer layer, for example, on each of these overlaps. So just so you know what we're doing, I'm taking right now, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone, right? We don't want to kill any birds on this channel, but we're going to take, we're going to take this piece here, put it under there, and we're going to cut this piece and this piece at the same time. Because we can. The trimmer cuts three pieces at a time. 
three pieces of DSP at a time. So we're going to put the trimmer there. And we're going to go five and a quarter. I'm going to be making lots of tag treats this season. Tag treats are something I always use six inch by three quarters of an inch for. And if you miss some of my, if you still have the fancy tag topper punch or the scalp tag topper punch, these are retired punches. I've given away a lot as prizes recently. Then you can make a lot of my tag treats or you can make them with your scan and cut. All right, let's test. Okay, good. Good. So we have that piece cut for the next one. So five and a quarter by... Okay, this is going to be on this card, right? The old olive card, and this is going to be on the cherry cobbler card. Okay, next layer. We're still working. We're working with the joy of Christmas. Okay, let's do the next layer, a quarter inch smaller. So five inches by, instead of four, it was five and a quarter by four, it was three, three and three quarters. Okay, double check that you have a nice quarter inch margin. And we do. All right, so that's good. Now we need to do the middle pieces. Getting rid of all the scraps and saving all the scraps. And the middle pieces. Here, let's let's move this. We don't need this one yet. We're gonna do this one in a little bit. We'll we'll cut it in a minute. Let's just move that one over there. Just to get it out of the way. So what we have here is the old olive. And we're gonna get this piece here, the gold piece. And we're doing the beaver card. So this this card, this is a half inch strip of this. So half an inch strip. I love this paper. Distress gold, I think it's called. Distress gold. Okay, then we need, for this other one, we need an inch. So we're going to go ahead and make, don't worry, I'll write this all down for you on my mat. I mean, the, the designs are the same. They're just measurements are different. We're still going to have like little bands. All righty. And I think the last thing I need is that piece of gingham here. So this one, or no, we, we need this little piece of green. And we need this piece of gingham. So this piece of gingham is going to be one and three quarters. Okay, so that's our little strip that's going to be in the middle of this card. See what I'm doing? I'm cutting them all at once. We'll get back to that later. And then we need a little piece of green for the behind that one. So let's look for a piece that will, here we go. It's this piece here, this piece here. A one inch piece. All right, let's see. I think I took out, I'm not sure if I took out a paper pumpkin. I need like a mat for the table, let's see. Okay, I, I think I had one, but it fell on the floor. So we just, I know that some of you are like, wait, hold on, hold your horses. Got to catch up to you. So we, I mean, I just know this from, from teaching that the level my students are at. Okay, so let's see. We have, we're doing this, we're just going to write old olive card. Maybe it's just easier to write old olive on here. So we can just draw the card for you, right? I didn't put the inside in. You have pieces you can use for the inside. Your pieces are five and a quarter by four. So that this card is eight and a half long. Right, like so, and then it would be five and a half high. I mean, this is when you make the two cards at once. If you have to make this some cardstock, and you score at four and a quarter. Score. Okay. So we always do, in, in this card club, we always make two horizontal, two vertical cards, because I like to change everything up. So over here, we have our cherry cobbler card. And that one's more... It's like a longer card because it's a it's a vertical card. So we have 11 inches long. 
by four and a quarter inch high. So for your visual, let's bring that one back over here. And that's your visual. So now we have the two card stock done. Now let's do the DSP. So the DSP is gonna be the same for both, for the first time, the first layer. I mean, whether we turn it sideways or not, we got five and a quarter by four. Okay, so far so good, five and a quarter by four. Now this card, because this card is has that extra layer inside, we're gonna go with one more. We're gonna go, well, you're not gonna be able to see that, five inches by three and three quarters. I don't wanna write on the red part. Okay, and now you have little strips. So let's draw that. We're gonna draw all these out so you can see what you need. They're not in proportion, but this one is one half inch high. And this one, and then it's, the, then the other part is one inch high. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about these pieces. How long are they? They're as long as our inner piece. Not inner piece. Yes, we all strive for inner piece. Inner piece, inner piece, P-I-E-C, instead of P-E-A-C. Okay, so there we go. So it's going to be like that. All right, so that's what, we, that's what our card looks like. Now, over here, we don't have that extra layer like we do here of DSP. We just have the little pieces. So we have our little pieces. And one is kind of longer, so we have... So one of them is one inch high, and one is one and three quarter inch high. And this is these are the pieces for this card. So now we just, it's a matter of gluing and trimming and getting these together. So I like to use glue for this. That's my personal preference. It just helps me line up all these things much easier. So you could put glue on the, you know, either part or both parts. Sometimes I like to really spread the glue out. <laughs> and don't worry that it's hanging off the edge because this is just an easier way for me to do it. I just slap it on the card and then I cut it to the side, to the width that I need it. All right, good enough. And then this one. Come on, glue, where are you? Okay, put on note shopping list glue. You can imagine how much glue I go through in this household. In this she shed. Okay, now for this next part, I don't mind using rolling adhesive because I'm not trying to line up the middle part. So if I just do, you can just use rolling adhesive for the next part. And I'm just gonna go over the edge a little bit. You'll see, because I just cut it. It just makes me cut it more evenly. And this is gingham, so you definitely shouldn't have to be crooked when you're using gingham, because there's lines there on the paper. So how I got crooked is beyond me, when there's lines on my paper. Okay, good. Don't stick it to your mat. And then this one. See which will be the up or down. It doesn't really matter which way is up or down on this kind of paper. Just gonna let it hang on the hang over. Now we're not gonna attach it to the shed. Now we're gonna take out our snips. Very important to use snips and not your big old honking scissors, because these are much more exact, and then you can trim it right down. I just find when I use the paper trimmer. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to cut it the exact size. Unless I cut it with the designer series paper, it's either too short or too long. And I just find that this makes my card exactly the way I want it. I just cut off the excess. But, I mean, if you really have to save your paper, like if you're really worried about that little scrap, then don't do it this way. Cut it with your trimmer. And cut them all together. Like, in other words, cut these, cut these the width they need to be while you have the other stuff on your trimmer because then everything will be exact. 
So this I would save. Well, except that it has adhesive on it. You know, I might be able to die cut something out of it. And this little piece. But those little pieces, no, I would... They don't... You know, they're just little scraps. So I'd just toss those. All right, so that'll be for our next card. We're going to put that over there for a moment. And we'll assemble this card. Whoops. There goes... What was that? My pencil? I hope I'm done with my measurements. I guess I'm done with my measurements because my pencil just rolled off the table. See if I like that better on the bottom or that. I like this one better on the top because there's more, it's more festive on the top. There's more berries, like holly berries on the top. So I like that one better. And then we're just attaching this to the old olive card and you have two cards, so just make both cards. And then you're going to put your basic white that I gave you for the inside of your card. And then sometimes you, have basic white envelopes. Sometimes you have very vanilla envelopes. Depends on which kit. I just ran out of very or of the basic white, but you could put the basic white envelope or the very vanilla envelope. And then you're going to take some of the pool party sheer ribbon. It's just such a great ribbon. Oh, I love this ribbon. Okay, put that there. Go ahead and put a little put a little bit of adhesive right there to hold your bow. And then do a little loop-de-loop, -loop, like so, with your bow. And I know that rhymes. Okay, spread that out. And it'll, it'll kind of like flatten down a little bit on top, see? You kind of even want to flatten it down a little bit. And then you just do a little bit of adhesive there so that it, the bow doesn't come undone. Whoops. Okay, now you're going to take your, again, take your snips. If you're wondering why you don't have success with your cutting things, you don't have the right scissors. I used to think the scissors didn't matter. And then, I mean, I love other brands of scissors too, but they, these are really, really great for ribbon and for cutting close to edges, these paper snips from Stampin' Up. I mean, scissors do matter. Okay, there's your measurements if you want to take a screenshot, and then I'm going to be covering that up. Let's move that up there. And now I'm going to just add some dimensionals to that. Did I cover them up? Oh, I know where I did. I put them. I put them in my little work tray. So we're gonna flip this over and put a few dimensionals on there. And stick those. Hopefully the dimensionals don't touch the ribbon because they don't stick well to ribbon. I mean, I think I did, I think I put it up a little bit higher, but I think it would be good just right in the center. But I, I want to tilt the hello, I want to tilt the Christmas wishes like so. I'm going to put the circle in the center like so. Okay, and I don't want to rub on it because we just colored it. So I'm just going to stamp, like push on it like that. Oh, yes, I love when I can replicate my own cards after weeks of making, like I made them weeks ago and I'm like, what did I do again? All right. Sometimes I come up with designs and I'm like, what did I do? So I, I'm using the smaller snowflakes, small and medium snowflakes. That's what you have in your kit. These are the large snowflakes. You have in your kit the small and the medium snowflakes. So we're just going to put a few adhesive back snowflakes, which are still on sale at our Stampin' Up! store. All right, I put a little gold one up there. Let's put a little, put a little gold one up there. And then I put a little, let's see where I put, I put one over there. Okay, I put the white one on that part for contrast. So we'll put a white one there. And then I'll turn it. I'm going to do a little copper one on here because I like the way that came out. Copper. See how it's like you're just, you're just contrasting. So you put a few snowflakes on it to contrast. All right, first card is done. All right. And part of the second card is done. So let's say hello to everybody and we will continue coloring and working on the second card. All right, Lynn is here. You like that stamp? It's a cute stamp. Which one? Are you talking about this or are you talking about the, the fluffiest friends that you guys are going to see later? Okay, we don't need any snowflakes for the draft card because the draft card had 
so much going on with so many colors and it was so big that I didn't need fluffiest friends. I mean, not fluffiest friends. I didn't need embellishments for that card. So go back. I never know where my packaging is. It, I, I probably used it to glue something onto. All right. Hello, Janet and Denise Wisdom. I love your last name. Hello, Linda from Stamp Cut and Create. Hello, Kathy from Backyard Stamper. Phil from Florida. Nice to see you. My regulars are here. So, yeah, whoever didn't get, she's talking about bingo this Friday. I'll, I'll show you guys what we're making in bingo this Friday at the end of this video if you want me to. Bingo this Friday. We're doing that with the very cute. And, yes, if you didn't get my mom's bag, it was, like, practically free. I mean, she she spent money on the fabric, and it was only $15 for an add-on. And plus PayPal takes a fee whenever I charge things, and then I have to ship it, and I had to pay more to ship it. So it was literally free. So you missed out. If you didn't get it, you're like, oh, $15 is too much. It was really, like, free. I mean, it was an amazing amount of work she did, and it was awesome. She, I mean, they were giant bear bags. Not to mention you got a free bear bag with your kit. So very cute. This next month, I gave her a break here. We're not big. Well, actually, she didn't, she didn't give herself a break. Next month, she is doing swag bags for my Card on Blue members who have been around for six months. But she's not doing bags for my regular kit. I need a little bit of... Because we can't do two bags in one month for two kits. That was that was a bit much. I'm just using my. I'm just I'm just using this. So these are scallop shapes, and I'm gonna go ahead and put those on. Oops, let's let's not lose our stamps, shall we? Let's put this over here. I'm gonna flip that around and put the scallop shape on there. And we're gonna stamp our Mr. Draft, and then we could color it and our and our uh, our Christmas sentiment. So, yes. So, say hello if you're here. And, oh, good. You already saw my reel? Well, thank you, Kathy. That was nice of you. Hello. She's, Chardine is in Philadelphia, my old stomping grounds. And she's watching me and the Phillies at the same time. So, I don't know how that is. But that's a real big contrast. But that's cool. I have actually went to Phillies games when I was little. When, when we could afford games. When they used to be like $10 to go to a baseball game. <laughs> that's when I used to go or actually my dad probably hooked us up with someone got us tickets because he knew everybody let me I'm just getting out the draft and I miss my dad you just made me think of him Charlene when you said Phillies hello Susan nice to see you Susan's also on my team yes so she's using her stamp and rate markers that's what Kathy's saying I do love the blends Kathy's using her markers. I'm using markers a little bit to get into those nooks and crannies. Hello, Midge. Nice to see you. And thank you, Janet, for reminding everybody to like this video. I'm going to go ahead and put the draft on this block. This is stamping block I. And we're going to we're going to see if it'll ink up good. And we'll put it. We'll stamp it on the mat first before we stamp it on the paper. Okay, pretty good. We'll do it one more time, but let me get the sentiment first. This one I want to put the sentiment on first because then the draft can be over on the side, but you can't really move the sentiment. So we want the long sentiment. May your season be one that's festive and fun. So we're going to take this sentiment and we're going to put it on. We'll put it on this stamping block. And I did see somebody had a hack for getting this stuff off of your stamping block. Was it vinegar? I don't know. I just saw the hack and I was like, I got to, I put them in the dishwasher and it helped, but I was like, let me try that hack. All right, that's good. Hold it, hold it, hold it. All right, now, just in case, because it is a video and I'm live and I like to have a backup plan in case our, in case my coloring goes to hell in a handbasket. So we're going to put the, we're just grabbing another one of these scalloped contours this is from the scalloped contours dies and i'm just making a second one just in case so now we're going to take now we're going to keep on trying this draft it wasn't really ready yet to put on this paper so we're going and we still got to find my bird because my bird is somewhere i'm going to put a little bird on here too okay it's pretty good but i like it to be a little bit more crisp 
I know it's a little extra ink, but it's nothing compared to the, um, you know, the work of cutting a die. Dyes are hard work, so it's 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 better to test your your ink and get the most of your ink. Okay. Okay, now I got it right where it goes, hopefully, and I'm gonna push down and hold it for a few seconds. Hopefully, get good coverage. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Yes! Woohoo! Perfection! All right, I'm happy about that. Now I gotta find my little bird. I bet you guys know where the bird is. Because I used it for the other thing, so like, here's my, my little beaver, but I don't see my bird anywhere. Hmm. Well, it should be like honest. Okay, let's see. I'm going to look and see if you guys are like, it's right there. Or right, well, let's do the other draft and then we'll find the bird. How about that? Maybe it went with the pencil onto the floor. Nope, it's not on the floor with the pencil. And I know I didn't put it back. Oh, that's the wrong stamp set. Because I don't put anything back while I'm in the middle of a video. So that couldn't be it. Ah, I found it. It's on the, it was on the little black tray. All right, so let's do the bird in a moment. Now that we found, I just wanted to find the bird. All right, where were we? We were trying to do the draft, and I'm still saying hello, so we're multitasking. We have the draft is inked up really well. And I'm just doing a second one because it's, my stamp is already out, and I'm not cleaning it, and it's inked up. And then we have an extra backup. And then we're going to put a little bird next to the tree. If, if it fits. See, over there, it fit a little better on my original card, but see, it may fit there. So, hmm, the bird may or may not fit there. So I, I'm just going to probably put the bird, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to put the bird over there because the bird will be facing out the other direction, and I try, you know, it's okay to put it over there. But I just want you to know that if you leave a little space, you can put a little bird there. And you know how to color it because we just colored it. I'm just going to leave off the bird because I don't want to try to shove it in that little tiny space. Little might be a little too crowded. And we have enough going on in this card. So let's now color. I'm, I'm just happy to find my bird. We are going to go with the tree. Let's do the tree and shaded spruce. We're going to take the, see which one I like better. I like there's something about that one I like better. We're going to just use this one to color with. So shaded spruce, dark. It's very dark, the shaded spruce, as you can see. Just do your tips of your trees. Some, you know, you don't have to do every one. Because to me, I think the light shaded spruce looks better, but it's the combination of the two that's really cool. And like Kathy said, she's using her markers. So that's really good. So Lynn, I did tell my mom what you said about the bags, and she was very happy. She loves positive feedback. I went in and read her your message. Right after you sent it, sometimes it takes me a while to give her the message, but it happened to be I was in the other room, and she was thrilled with what you said about the bag. And it's not why I send them all at different times. It just takes a long time. So Mitch also said she loves her bag. Oh, hello, Michelle. Nice to see you from South Carolina. And also, Mitch is a Philly girl. Awesome. Thank you, Phil, for liking my podcast. So you guys, if you don't know, yesterday I launched a podcast, my first episode. The day before I put a trailer out, a trailer is like less than two minutes. My podcast is called Hello Crafty Friends, and it's for everybody. It's but especially for, I mean, everybody here who's, who's crafters. And especially for those of you that want to turn your passion into profit and turn, turn this into a business. I have a membership group that I just started. And you can join that at hellocraftyfriends.com, exclusive Facebook group where we're going to be doing 
deeper training on all the topics I talk about on my podcast. And some of the guests will even do some guest workshops in my training group. And my first interview, so I did my first solo podcast yesterday. So thank you for watching that. And tomorrow I have my first interview with an Etsy seller who has over 18. Oh, that's a bad, that's a bad one. We'll try this side. She has over 18,000 sales on her Etsy store. She does mostly digital products. She was the one that first got me into online courses. And she has an Etsy shop and a website and presence on social media. And I just reached out to her and said, will you be, since you got me started, when I was getting started on my YouTube channel, she reached out to me for help. And I was like, ask, you know, reach it out for me for ideas and help. I mean, help with their scan and cut, I'm saying. She didn't need help with the other stuff. She's a beautiful designer. So I can't wait to hear what she has to say about her journey on Etsy. And then I'm going to release that hopefully late tomorrow night. So we'll get to start here from Crafty Friends. And I have my next interview lined up right after that with an author, an artist. And so we'll be just talking about crafty topics in general, create creativity, mindset, business strategies. Boy, note to self, buy some shaded spruce blends because this is so dried out. And it's taking like 10 times longer to color than it should. And because it's so dried out, they're not really blending like they should. But you can see how cute the first one's blended. What I like to do sometimes is just put a little bit of Wink of Stella on there and just blend the glitter in there. So thank you. So if you guys are podcast listeners, please go to Apple or Spotify. And then you go to Hello Crafty Friends and you find it. And then leave a rating if you can. That'll be great because then I'll be under... The new podcast I'll be found because nobody, even crafters, I want crafters to find it, but no crafters will even find it on their own unless others rate it and say, hey, this is worth listening to. And then they'll show it to other people with similar interest. When I say they, meaning the algorithm. I'm going to also color the little leaves while I'm here. The algorithms are pretty much artificial intelligence, just looking at what people like. And they will show my work to other crafters that have similar interest, but only if you guys like it and other people say, hey, this is good, we like that. I'm just putting a couple little tops of the bulbs. Okay, so we're good on that. I think I got all the green done. That was, that was rough on my hands, boy, woo. Now I can keep saying hi and keep reading the comments. So your daughter's at the game right now, Mitch? That is so cool. Yeah, it was just like the only time I went there was when I was little to the Phillies. Take me out to the ball game. Hi, Pat from Alabama. You had the bird on the big block. Thanks for reminding me. Kathy's keeping me straight. Like I knew I found that it was on my tray. I moved my tray so things wouldn't fall off my table. Now I'm taking, I'm doing the big things first because then we can make a lot of progress here. And I want this video to be an hour, not, not five hours. So I don't want it to be a whole hour. I'm saying I don't want it to be longer than an hour. That's just my rule. I'm, I'm into long. This is called long form content. The, when we just kind of talk and craft like this, this is long form. Podcast is long form. They're longer than Instagram, where people have the attention span of a squirrel. We make really short content. That's short form content. So this is long, but I still want it to be longer than an hour because we still, I still want our time to be you know, used wisely. So that's why I'm, just for a quick win, we're taking the Daffodil Delight here and we are just coloring our draft quickly so that we get something done here. So I'm using Light and Dark Daffodil Delight and then I'm going to use Crush Carry for the, because Daffodil Delight's not really a coordinating color with the sweet, but Crush Carry is. So I'm going to do the spots in Crush Carry, which is a coordinating color. And I'm going to do this in Daffodil Delight. Now, why not Crush Carry? Because we don't make blends, at least I don't think we do, in the Crush Carry color. 
So we make blends in this color. I'm just going to go ahead and finish the arm. Daffodil Delight. So it's close enough. Now, while I'm here, though, let's just go ahead and... Uh, what, what else can we color? Just a few things here. Like, you know, maybe this little... Uh, here, this little bow. I just, I just used this color a few times. Then we'll put a few little dots. All right, good. I'm just looking. What I'm doing is I'm using my other one as a reference and seeing what I colored. And now I'm going to take the light, Daffodil Delight. Please don't squeak. Okay, good. The way I know that my markers are dry is when I use them on these videos and I find out how dry they are because I don't go inspecting my markers. And I moved, you know, last year and, and un, un, I unpacked a lot of this stuff this year. So it's it's just a matter of I don't know that they're dry until I start using them and they I find out they're dry. So they they could last for five years or they could last for five minutes. I mean you just never know with these these things that you do here. Okay, that's that's cute. And now we'll take the crushed cherry. That was that was light. By the way, that was the light one. The light daffodil delight. Oops, the ear has to be finished. I'm just gonna use crushed cherry for the ear. See how that cool these crushed curry dots look. And now we have three colors on the draft. I do the dots last because it fixes all the problems of all the colors running over. And now we're putting this on the paper, which where cherry cobbler is a coordinating color. Let's see what else I could use in this color. So we're going to go ahead and Oops, I missed a spot. I missed a spot, literally. So we're going to use Cherry Cobbler as our red, and I like to use the light one because it's such a dark color. I just like to use the light one. And if you do color outside the line, there's something called a color lifter, but that one doesn't look bad. I'm, I'm not going to fix that one, but that's you can use what's called a color lifter and get... The little smears off. Okay, let's see. This is another place for cherry cobbler. Boy, this is tight, tight, tight. I should have got out the marker. Okay, uh, here. I was looking for the bird. Where's my bird? The bird's not there. Okay. Now, pool party is not one of the colors in this suite, but I still use it a lot. It's a subtle color, and I use it for eyes and things. And I'm going to use it for the star. So this time, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the dark one. I'm just moving my mat up there because there's a bit of a glare. So we're going to take this. Dark one. And let's see what else I can do in pool party. I did this little guys. Um a couple Christmas balls and the star and the stripe. Okay, and then the other one was red, or cherry cobbler, over here. That's why I did it before. All right, so we're left with pecan pie, and I like to do the hooves of the draft in crumb cake. So we'll do crumb cake there for the draft's little hooves. Only, only a couple are showing. And then this one, so let's see. I could do crumb cake for the stem, but then I'm going to use another color for the basket. And we'll even do, we'll do crumb cake for the top of the basket. Then we're going to use pecan pie. So we're just, that's because it's one of the coordinating colors. And it'll just kind of tie in those colors there. 
So you can see, let's get our before and after just so you can really see it. I mean, if you don't color your stamped images, you're missing out. It just really brings them to life. Not to mention coloring's fun. I like coloring anyway, adult coloring. Hey, you know what? I forgot the berries. We gotta get the cherry cobbler again for the holly berries. I just wish for those of us that can't see very well that the images would be a little bit bigger, but then it would be really hard to find dyes to put them on. That's the only thing. It was pretty hard to just find dyes just to hold this draft. So I need, I'm going to do the, the side of it. And that was regular pecan pie, like the light one. And this is the dark pecan pie. So just for dimension, I'm going to do the side of the basket in dark. In fact, I'm going to go back over here. Oh, you know what? Never touch something that works. That's my rule for crafting. I'm not even touching this card because it works. It already got smeared a little bit up there. I'm not touching that card. All right, before I do my Wink of Stella, we need our berries to be cherry cobbler. Yeah, if you ever try to go back and like fix a card that's perfect the way it is, then you're bound for trouble. <laughs> so we're just going to leave it the way it is. I'm just going to, I'm just doing all the reds because red tends to smear. Okay, let's, okay, it didn't smear. Oh, yay. Now I'll just do the other colors. I'm just going over the whole thing with the glitter brush because it's cute. And I know when people send me glittery things, it makes me happy. Sparkly, glittery things. All right, now I can do the tree. Let's see, we need the star to be glittery, of course. And sometimes it smears, but that's okay. So I, that that's another way to get your markers to blend together. So while they're still wet, you put a little Wink Costello on them, and then the colors blend together even better because this thing smears a little bit. Ooh, I like it. And when it does smear, you just go for it. See, I was just smearing it like on purpose, like this little hack got smeared. Put, just put a little extra glitter on it. Smear it on purpose. Oh, it looks good. See the glitter, how it does? The glitter just makes makes it. Definitely. So, Chardine, the only blends they have in multiple color sets, they just have the light and dark. You can buy them $9, light and dark. I think they're 9 Maybe they're 10 I don't remember the price of blends anymore. But they're, But the other way you can get, like the only one that comes in a set is the skin tone blends. Not the regular blends. Okay, we're going to pop this up with dimensionals. But I'm, I'm kind of glad they don't come in sets because they run out. They run out so quickly. Okay, so they, that's why I'm glad that they don't. Because, like, if you, if you had a set of bright blends and you bought a set of 10 and they only came in a set of 10 with, like, light and dark, which would be 20 blends, as long as you can get refills, I guess it would be cool. Yeah, I do like the idea of having like a discount getting them together, but they run out in different amounts. I wish you could buy one blend, like just the light, just the dark. We used to do that, but the inventory became a nightmare for stamping up. And now they only sell them in pairs. But I liked it because sometimes my light ran out and not my dark. And I just want one blend. Oop, pop that up. See how that's popped up with dimensionals? And there you have it. So now I'm going to show you some other projects. No, no, podcasts are free, Janet. Podcast, it's like a radio station, right? I had to rate the podcast. It's rated PG, or but they they called it they called it clean. I had to do it like clean rating, and then you you get approved by Apple, and it's um and spot I'm on Spotify and Apple. I'll be on other places too soon as soon as I go to the directories. But it's it's like a radio where it's free to listen to. You subscribe, so when you subscribe. Like you subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys have subscribed to my channel. Because a lot of people watch my videos and don't subscribe to my channel. That on YouTube. So it's like that, but it's it's a it's an RSS feed, like a radio feed. Or so anytime there's a new episode, I don't have to go to Apple and say, here's my new episode. It pulls it from my feed. So like here's I've done a trailer and then I've done episode one. And tomorrow I have an interview. 
and da da da. When I got approved up here, then Apple just gives it to, pulls it all down and puts it in your feed in front of you, in front of your face. Like it gives you the new items without you asking for them and without me sending them there. I put them on my website in my feed and they go out to everybody. So it's pretty cool. So no, they're free to listen to and the feed, you just subscribe to the feed, Janet, but that's a good question. So go to Apple Podcasts if you have an iPhone and go to Spotify if you have a Samsung, you know? Okay, heat tool, thank you. That was the hack I was thinking of. Lynn, thank you so much. It was the heat tool. So here's the hack. Because I put these in the washing machine or the dishwasher and it worked. But I saw the hack the other day on Instagram. So this lady, and I, and I forget who did it, she heated this with her heat tool and all the bubbles went away. So I'm definitely going to try that hack. And if it works, we'll, we'll show you on one of my well-ventilated rooms. And she had a mask on? Wow. She had a mask on maybe because she was melting plastic. Okay, interesting. But thank you for remembering that hack. Okay, let me show you the rest of these cards we're making this month. So for, this is card on blue. We have done the first two of our four cards this week. Not just this month. It's always in the third week. Because you subscribe by the 10th to my card club. You get the kit sent to you after the 10th. And by now, you should all have your card club kits. And, and on the third week, we make all the cards. And then we get ready for the next month. So this is kind of what we're making next, this week. But we're going to make them separate videos because this is, well, it's not that this is a lot of coloring. This one is a lot of coloring. So Mr. Moose shouldn't be too hard to color. But it might be separate videos, maybe not. But I'll, I'll see. We'll, we'll see. Probably separate videos. And so that's what we're making using the Merry Bold and Bright Paper. But this cute set set, not that one, the cute one we're using right now, wherever it may be, here it is, is also fun for making other kinds of cards. So in the festive and fun, when we opened it, when we first did an unboxing of the new catalog, I showed you how to use the blending brush, the embossing folder, the snowfall embossing folder. Okay, let's pull this over so we don't lose our stamps. Oops. All right, we're going to lose our stamps. Think positive. <laughs> we're not going to lose our stamps, I should be saying. So isn't this cool? It's a 3D embossing folder. So this is what I did for the back of this paper. And then we used a blending brush for this card. And this one I cut out with scissors, but we're going to be using a piece like this and a piece of Granny Apple Green for this card here and doing coloring. So it's a different color scheme because of the colors. So and we're going to be using a Poppy Parade base. And now this card is... So these are the two cards we're making in the card on blue this coming week, or this, not coming week, this, this current week. And then this, these, this card I made during an unboxing and this card I made during, when I was talking about our new starter kit special that's going on during the month of October, where you can join for only $64.35 and get $125 worth of items. I was explaining in that video, and you can watch it, it's called Starter Kit Special. I was saying you could get cardstock and basic white and a trimmer and all the things, right? And then I, I said, let's try to make stuff with it. So this is what we made live in the video. And you guys picked these colors, which are very interesting for Christmas. Maybe you didn't know I was asking for you to pick colors for a Christmas card, but you did, and we made this card. So you guys picked Crush Curry, Blackberry Bliss, and then I think I added a little bit of Old Olive to tie it in. All right, so these are fun and festive cards. Now, I promised something really cute, and that is we're because we're using this card this one next month thank you kathy so sincere and because this is a new product coming out next month at the same time this one's out now you can you guys can order your so sincere for next month's card club but this one is coming out as an online exclusive during the month of november fluffiest friends so you saw me unbox it i got so excited i had to cut out the fluffy friend the mr beaver and he has a little heart and then after the video was over, I made a little nest for him because I thought this was a nest for the bird. And you said, no, that's the beaver's nest. So I colored the beaver's nest with wild wheat, pecan pie, or was it, what's the other one? Not pecan, maybe copper clay. Well, one of those. And crumb cake. And what I did is I was trying to match up this paper here. This paper, and this is Misty Moonlight. This, this paper is from Let's Go Fishing. And so thankful for you from here. So this is... Mr. Beaver and the Fluffiest Friends. And speaking of cute things, because we just have less than a minute here, we made this on YouTube as part of the Very Cute Workshop Series. 
So we made these live, these little treat holders. And each one holds a little Hershey nugget. So if you want to see that tutorial, be sure to watch that on my YouTube channel. Well, thank you all for watching. Have a great evening. And I hope that you'll be sharing your cards in our Send a Card Challenge in my VIP Facebook group. And stay tuned this week for bingo. I promised I would show you the bingo cards we're making. So this Friday night, those of you that are attending the bingo, we're making this card, this card, and this card. And I stay tuned for my VIP group where I share the measurements for these cards so that you can get prepared ahead of time and get everything ready that you need to make. That's all for now. This is The Papered Chef.